participants a brief career guidance. As we are approaching the end of this training program, we are getting indulged in various aspects of agriculture day by day. Agriculture as a domain is rapidly developing with the advent of tech and digitalization. Cutting edge tech is expected to pave the way to diversify careers and jobs across the value chain. But today, we are going to have the most hustling session. As mentioned by Mr. Kam Kodinya in the last session about novel farming systems are the most talked subject in agriculture globally. With the theme of entrepreneurship continued, we are moving on to today's theme on novel farming systems. The growing vertical farming has the capability of assuring global nutritional security. Globally, agri startups are gathering around hydroponics and aeroponics are making it reliable. The technology can also allow crops to grow in locations where conventional farming is not possible. Astronauts on the International Space Station, for example, are growing their own food in soilless systems under LED lights with cabbage, mustard, lettuce, and kale among the crops on the menu. But the costs of both money and energy are still high. This means leafy salads, smaller vegetables, and fruits such as tomatoes and strawberries high value crops that grew quickly are about the limit of what is currently available commercially from vertical farms. But where exactly is the limit of what we can actually grow on a vertical farm? And if we did find a way to overcome the problems of cost and energy use, what would be a world where all our food is grown in such farms look like? Could we ever move to completely soil free farming? Let us find out more on hydroponics as this farming saves up to 80% of the water typically used in standard methods. By removing soil from the process and placing the roots directly in nutrient rich water, food can be grown in almost any controlled environment. How this technique is different from conventional farming. Let us invite Mr. Rama Krishna Raila, agribusiness consultant and hydroponics expert. Sir has 21 years of vast experience in India and Europe. He has worked in various horticulture production systems, farming, floriculture, hydroponics, orchard management, greenhouse farming, plant nursery business, organic farming, terrace farming, vertical gardening. He has been awarded the State Udyana Mitra Award. So let us hear from sir on the most hustling topic in the horticulture segment nowadays. Hi, good evening. Yes, sir. Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I welcome all the participants. Uh, this is a really wonderful topic. So myself, I would like to introduce uh, yeah, Mr. Bupesh has introduced uh, and uh, I'm working since last 20 years in the field of uh, horticulture. Since uh, from the basics, uh, I worked in the department uh, in a uh, agriculture area where uh, the very uh, the uh, unprofessional uh, uh, kind of uh, practices are there. And we have seen uh, where the farmer is uh, uh, very poor in technologies and uh, we have uh, actually um, gone through the uh, international level. We have uh, learned the techniques and we are now importing these techniques in Indian uh, context and we are very happy to help the farmer and uh, we have introduced a lot of technologies uh, for the poor farmer. Nowadays, you, you might have seen uh, how uh, the technologies, uh, we have a lot of technologies uh, uh, which are actually very well um, researched and uh, established in the lab. But uh, when it comes to the farming level, uh, the system of uh, approach is different and their practices uh, uh, to the farmer or adaptability is actually very, very poor. Uh, we the established technologies uh, uh, we are unable to um, actually uh, 
delegate to the farmer. Uh, so in that way, I have uh, worked uh, in the government and again, I'm working in the private sector and on my own, actually encouraging a lot of farmers uh, for the good technologies. Uh, these are the greenhouse technologies and uh, hydroponic technologies. We have uh, very good uh, farming uh, um, techniques where uh, it is very easy to adopt uh, it is not uh, a rocket science but very easy where uh, if you understand the concept of uh, farming because you know the greenhouse technology we have a lot of uh, structures uh, the models we have and uh, still the farmer you know and when it goes to the farming level um, the farmer somehow uh, he's not very happy with the technologies uh, so uh, concept uh, of understanding is very important uh, so really um, so these kind of uh, techniques, uh, many uh, entrepreneurs are learning uh, by this kind of uh, seminars, uh, which is being introduced by AG Matrix. So I, wish I should thank uh, and I should actually congratulate them uh, at this juncture because a lot of entrepreneurs are since last, uh, I think, 13 days. Uh, see, because this course, Atal course is being, uh, see, organizing we, they, uh, from 18 to, uh, I think, 5th March. So see, two days left because I have, I think, thousands of participants have been participated in their learning and they are taking these technologies to the farm level. Our, our ultimate goal is to develop the farms. Uh, because it is a uh, new era starting now because uh, where the farming uh, um, the levels uh, i mean uh, the technical uh, concepts has to be uh, enhanced and farmer should get the um, double income and uh, the indian produce get the standards of global uh, exports uh, neither it is the greenhouse or uh, is the, or hydroponics or a uh, open farming, whatever may be that, uh, but uh, many entrepreneurs uh, should um, uh, also think that uh, um, not only uh, we actually establish the greenhouse or we establish the hydroponic system, but we should also maintain the, it's the establishment is very easy. Any, any engineer can do that, but uh, the production system all depends upon the horticulturist or agriculturist or the one who is actually dealing the crop. So in the cropping pattern, uh, we have to uh, standardize the techniques. We have to um, uh, go um, with the consistency in supply, uh, not only in horticulture and agriculture, um, uh, where we can establish the uh, the practices uh, um, with uh, uh, very good protocols uh, so that uh, our product will gain uh, the international market importance and uh, our farmer can able to because you see, you see whenever we are producing a lot of mango or a lot of uh, vegetables but uh, our percentage of exports are very less so when i come back from europe uh, in 2011 we have started global gap uh, certification and everything but no farmer is coming forward see the farmer is not coming forward means uh, he is not understanding the technology so we have to we all entrepreneurs or we have to first of all we have to bring the farmer to the standards of uh, international farming then only our indian produce will get the importance uh, worldwide not you see we are dumping a lot of uh, um, the produce in uh, middle east or some in Asian countries, it is not the thing, but we have to even export the our produce to the European market and Western market. Uh, so that is the, our actually uh, um, uh, emphasis. Uh, so I hope uh, this uh, the seminars and this kind of uh, atal programs will give you a lot of uh, score, a lot of uh, um, um, this knowledge on this uh, techniques. Uh, you can you can also learn and you can practice and you can actually develop as a business and also you can develop some small farmers groups where you can help the uh, farming society so we have done many projects uh, in uh, center of excellence uh, which is an israeli project we have done uh, this greenhouse project but uh, we have seen uh, the greenhouse uh, technologies we have to change now a lot of technologies now coming new very very recently to india uh, and all all of those technologies as a, as a uh, as it is, we cannot implement in Indian context. We have to change them to the certain modifications. We have to change and we have to bring it to the uh, 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 small farmer level uh, where it is viable. 
so we have actually uh, worked on that also uh, where we can we have designed very small greenhouses and uh, hydroponic units also and terrace gardens uh, let us see how i just go through this uh, little bit uh, um, the how we actually now this uh, novel farming systems are helping to the farmer See here, but now you speak about uh, this kind of greenhouse farming and uh, hydro Actually, this uh, this is uh, simply as uh, you know that uh, the plant needs uh, uh, 16 elements and it needs uh, the external factors like light and atmospheric factors like CO2 and uh, other gases. And uh, it also, you know, the soil supplies all the nutrients. I mean, the nutrients, we can mention them as macro and micronutrients. But see, in hydroponics, uh, this, these are not actually removed. We are actually in keeping all them intact. We are not at all uh, doing without light or without uh, gases or nutrients. We are in the soil forming, we just... Uh, uh, take the help of the soil for uh, supporting the plant and also to some extent it can supply the nutrients. But here in hydroponics, just uh, uh, you just remove the soil and in this place, just we keep the nutrient solution of uh, different micro and macro nutrients. Uh, so this is simply, you can keep it as, uh, you can call it as uh, a, a naval farming system or hydroponic system where uh, the soil we are replacing with a, just a nutrient solution but other things like light and nutrients and other gases uh, these are all very 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 important for the growth of the plant either in the soil or in the water so this we can simply say that uh, you, you just concept is very important uh, whenever you are talking about uh, this uh, hydroponics uh, don't forget that uh, you are not removing the light nutrients and other gases just you are removing only soil and you are instead of soil you are just keeping other elements like water or some inert material like uh, we can just keep some inert material like coco peat or vermiculite or perlite or some other sawdust or whatever may be that but that is not soil so see without uh, soil we perform the plant growth and we take the results by utilizing maybe either light maybe maybe either artificial light or natural light so in indian context uh, better you can you have plenty of surya so you can use a light um, so light um, artificial light is okay no problem many countries are using but here we can use uh, the natural light and other gases are available in the atmosphere no you you, you have plenty of the gases and water regarding the water the very good water quality uh, if you have you can go for this kind of uh, system and nutrients uh, yes these are very common in soil farming and also in uh, hydroponics but high quality soluble nutrients we use here with a very negligible trace amounts of uh, uh, nutrients. So I can say that uh, uh, it is not completely organic, but we can classify it as a, a nutrient-rich food because uh, even uh, um, the, all the plants, uh, parts are getting all the nutrients and intake. in turn, we are taking all the micro and macronutrients which are uh, needed over the day-to-day -day life of human being. So that way we can say that uh, the plant is very rich in uh, uh, nutrients and uh, and other thing is uh, the soil we have uh, uh, removed the soil so the soil born pest and disease uh, almost all uh, removed so that way you can actually say that a lot of uh, pest diseases uh, 
uh, you can eliminate and you can reduce the quantum of the pesticides and uh, fungicides so th that way you can say that uh, this is uh, a, a pesticide residue free uh, product and that way that's why you can claim it as a very nutrient and pesticide residue free product but uh, nowadays uh, many hydroponic farmers are um, intended to spray the uh, uh, insect sites also but uh, it is not the concept. Uh, sure, you can use some organic uh, pesticides, um, organic fungicides or organic uh, sprays. You can go for um, the uh, hydroponic products because mostly in hydroponics are uh, almost uh, lettuce uh, or some salad crops we are growing. So better you always use uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, organic solutions for the spraying. Other thing is uh, the light. Light always uh, see that uh, it should be nine to ten hours light duration so that the plant grows because in the soil also the plant needs nine to ten hours and uh, the same light quantity whether it is artificial or whether it is a, a natural a polyhouse or it is a um, open ventilated polyhouse you can go for same light units around. Uh, 10,000 lux units to 40,000 lux units. Uh, if you can provide in the greenhouse, the plants grow luxuriously in hydroponic system. And the nutrients, uh, I have mentioned some of the nutrients, uh, macro and micronutrients. And uh, regarding the water, the water qualities are very important because uh, it is not the soil where uh, it can adjust the EC and pH uh, because the soil is a uh, big uh, kind of uh, pH adjuster. And uh, it can, uh, I mean, it it uh, it it can take uh, any kind of uh, nutrient, uh, and it can absorb it, and the plant it can uh, lessen the burden of uh, salts on the plants. But uh, here there is no such uh, soil, so that uh, water qualities are very important uh, when you are performing the uh, novel farming system. Because uh, here you know the uh, countries like uh, the uh, Gulf and uh, the countries like. Um, um, uh, Canada, Miami, where uh, we have, uh, they don't have practically soil. They, they have only the water, but uh, the water quality they will check pri 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 primarily and they just go for hydroponic systems because uh, this kind of system, you know, is highly suitable for those areas where uh, they don't have the practical soil availability. You know, the importance of the soil in uh, uh, Estonia or some other countries like Sweden or uh, some uh, seashells uh, where the tomatoes they're spending like more than three to four dollars a kg uh, because they don't have the soil particularly because they have all islands like 115 islands in seashells uh, and uh, they they most uh, um, mostly depend upon the imports so uh, this kind of technologies are highly suitable for the islands uh, actually this uh, hydroponics was uh, found in miami only so, uh, but the techniques were developed there initially in 1980s. So, from that uh, period, uh, now this slowly coming to India. Now, during COVID, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, shortage for the exotics like leafy vegetables and uh, other things. But uh, uh, yes, during COVID time, actually, to boost our immunity, also, we have started for exotic crops and we have uh, found out this kind of technology. During COVID time, everybody was talking about hydroponics because imports were banned and local buyers were uh, forcing um, the crop uh, availability, but there is no availability. And the local um, farmers also, our entrepreneurs also started uh, for this kind of uh, production technologies and knowingly, unknowingly. Uh, they have established the uh, systems and they have gone to the uh, production. But uh, the thing is, a lot of uh, disturbances where I have noticed many um, uh, hydroponic growers suffering with the marketing issues and uh, particularly the management of light inside the greenhouse, management of nutrients in the greenhouse for the hydroponic system and other humidity parameters uh, and other. Uh, maintenance problems uh, have occurred 
and uh, whenever i go i see simply a lot of pest and disease in the green houses instead of uh, uh, the healthy crop uh, whenever i go a lot of white flies and thrips and mites uh, they are eating my eyes like anything so i just suggest uh, for the entrepreneurs who are interested to grow for this kind of no it is not a um, Uh, the this is a uh, skyrocket system but uh, what is there is a, it is a, a live plant which is being attracted by a lot of uh, insects so be careful of insects and uh, other system management also you should be very careful it is a uh, simply plumbing uh, of nft and other things it, it will be engineering part but uh, as an entrepreneur you should know or you are uh, a manager or your supervisor should know about the maintenance of the light and other uh climatic parameters inside the greenhouse and uh, ecpc ph regulations also they should know at what stage the plant needs a uh, uh, high amount of uh, nutrients so these are all actually uh, very very important for the new entrepreneurs who want to establish uh, this kind of novel uh, farming systems the same uh, the photosynthetic uh, action will be there either in the soil based plants or in the nutrient uh, uh, water based plants so it's not a uh, the different uh, uh, the reaction or the re different kind of thing see but uh, in the water also we have uh, um, some issues um, because practically speaking uh, Uh, almost uh, all crops can be grown in water but uh, for a, an entrepreneur i don't like to grow tomatoes a big tomatoes in a uh, nft or dwc because uh, supporting systems and other things a little bit uh, becoming very difficult so that's why uh, we have actually classified the hydroponic systems into different types based on the water uh, and based on the material used if it is a pure uh, uh water kind of thing you can call them it as liquid hydroponics and when it is uh, other than the water other than the uh, water uh, you can call them as uh, uh, inert hydroponic systems uh, so we have a very good uh, commercial uh, systems for entrepreneurs we have one uh, grow bag method and dutch bucket method we can use uh, the coco peat and uh, perlite and vermiculite in uh, uh two is to one is one ratio where you can grow um the big vegetables like uh, fruit vegetables like tomatoes capsicums cucumbers and zucchinis and all other big vegetables you can categorize into in a uh, hydroponics because as an entrepreneur we need uh, um, a very good uh, yields returns uh, roi so i can talk about uh, um the entrepreneur uh, um, uh, uh, line only because as a businessman i need money so in agriculture definitely there is money but you have to choose the correct technology for the correct crop yeah you can select uh, suppose if you want to grow uh, lettuce and uh, spinach and other things yes you can go for nft or dwc or sprinkler method uh, which is uh, being used for microgreens and uh, uh, which is being used for fodder and uh, if you want to go for potatoes and tubers uh, ginger turmeric yes you can go within a span of one or two months by using aeroponic systems yes uh, but uh, when you want to really interested in uh, uh, growing uh, agriculture with uh, marine animals yes i recommend aquaponics uh, uh, ras recirculating aquaponic system which a little bit uh, the sensitive system where you have to maintain the ph for animals and plants and uh, other bio um, converting uh, um, microorganisms like nitrate bacteria nitrate bacteria so you have to maintain different ph conditions in aquaponic systems and uh, yes aeroponics is a very very sensitive system again 100% uh, um, uh, very good results uh, we have noticed the where we can grow tubers uh, by hitting the droplets fine droplets of water into the uh, tubers uh, and sprinkler method uh, is very popular for growing microgreens uh, now you see the importance of microgreens uh, the general plants uh, 15 days old you can just grow and just a cup of microgreen 100 grams is costing like 150 to 200 rupees in the market uh, so within 15 days you can grow almost all 
uh, vegetables as microgreens like radish, beetroot, and broccoli. You can grow almost all vegetables under uh, sprinkler system, and you can just uh, sell them as a microgreen. So definitely, I I always uh, uh, suggest this uh, sprinkler system for the uh, microgreen system, microgreen uh, production. And NFT, yes, these this is a familiar system which is being used in uh, in our country, but. Uh, it's also expensive and DWS is a very inexpensive and uh, very accurate method for growing leafy vegetables and NFT both are uh, actually NFT is the one where 90% uh, of uh, the root touches uh, uh, with the aeration. So a lot of aeration is possible, but 100% uh, aeration is possible in aeroponics that the growth is also more. And uh, now a little bit I want to go for... Um, other system but factors uh, whenever you select the hydroponic system see that uh, there is no correct system which can shoot to all the crops that's why you have to select uh, the crop and the correct system uh, for example you are taking capsicum go for grow bag system or dutch bucket system uh, both are uh, almost same but a little bit expensive uh, dutch bucket system is expensive <laughs> so <laughs> for shorter crops you can go for Mm, this uh, NFT uh, or uh, DWC or even aeroponics and uh, for always uh, the for the bigger crops you always I recommend uh, uh, the uh, trough system or Dutch bucket or grow back method nowadays we have introduced uh, cocoa slabs also see uh, here it is possible in vertical or linear method also so this is uh, mostly suitable for urban farming the and this is actually a nft system where we can actually uh, uh, follow in urban areas uh, this is uh, just three feet sir, above the ground yeah sir the slides are not visible okay okay somebody could please uh, yeah, yeah yeah it's visible it is visible now nice? Yes, sir. Yes, it's visible. Okay, okay, okay. See, uh, this uh, is a, my voice is clear because I have some problem here, net issue. Is it no, sir, it's loud and clear to us. You can continue. Yeah, it. yeah, it's okay. Yeah. See the the models uh, while selecting the models. Uh, see, we have uh, vertical models and yeah, but uh, as an entrepreneur, it should be very easy for us, and we have a uh, very good land bank. Uh, uh, in the open, uh, uh, and which is uh, very far away from the city, you can go for the linear system. But on the buildings and the other things, I always recommend the vertical. You can go up to 30, 40 um, vertical um, um, feet so that uh, your space you can organize the worship efficiently. And uh, uh, whenever you are doing uh, in urban areas, uh, select 1000 plants initially because, uh, in my experience, uh, let us uh, hit the market with 1000 plants only, where you can need just 200 square feet. Just 200 square feet, you can accommodate 1000 plants in vertical method. So, uh, you just follow the uh, consumer demand. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, it's very difficult uh, because, you know, consumer, uh, you take the consumer survey and go according to the survey and uh, hit your nearby gated communities, uh, uh, GHMC or some <coughs> municipal, graded municipalities, metropolitan cities. Uh, uh, you can use the roof as a whole and you can uh, create a very good greenhouse on a dome shape and you can just go with the... Um, uh, this business uh, thousand plants not uh, bad thousand plants so each plant you can sell at a hundred rupees uh, which is one lakh rupees per month so you can sell like a plant because you know how the business you know people are doing you know you can sell some live plants so within one month uh, all these uh, <coughs> very rich nutrient plants like lettuce uh, uh, and you know, china uh, cabbage lolo rozo all these uh, you can grow and you just you study the market first. Don't go at a time of 5,000 plants or 1 lakh plants. Simply go for 
a, a, a small number of plants initially, either in vertical or linear. Because linear is, you know, you know, it is just three feet height. And you can see all the plants every day. You can watch thoroughly what is the pest, what is the disease. And you can spray organic nutrients uh, if any uh, pest is there. And you can just uh, move and walk uh, um, uh, among them very easily. You can harvest them easily. So you, you, the entire process is in your hands. Well, and when it, vertical is there, <clears throat> yes. You have to watch it very more carefully and very precisely you have to uh, see the topmost plant also because here each and every plant counts. It's the money. You are spending a lot of money on that. So it should be each and every plant should give you money. So be careful on the pest and disease. So don't think that the pest will not come or disease will not come because it is a live plant. So definitely it will attract some pest and disease. So follow only IPM, integrated pest and integrated nutrient management, so that I will focus um, in coming slides also, I'll show you how to, you can do the IPM. <coughs> and <coughs> these models you can select with 1000 plants where you can get very good income. But then uh, you can also prepare the NFT on your own. Now available channels are there. You, the flat channels are best preferred uh, instead of round and circular pipes. Uh, we have uh, sizes for the urban farms like 1 meter, 3 meter, 6 meters, even up to 9 meters also. Always remember that uh, suitable length of uh, channel should be at a proper slope of uh, 1 or 2 percent so that uh, the drainage end will be uh, the lower and the water gets uh, the drainage uh, or the what is the circulatory water gets uh, uh, out very easily. And cavities also, please select the cavities. Uh, on the channels, uh, either it is in the DWC or it is in the NFT, you have to be careful while doing the uh, cavities. According to your crop uh, dia, your crop canopy, you can select the uh, cavity size because uh, I have seen people doing uh, strawberries in two inch uh, um, cavity, uh, two inch net pot, but uh, it is very difficult, you know, just go for four, four inches, bigger uh, dia, cavities and bigger channels where you can go up to 300 mm also the dia the width of the channel so accordingly you can you have to select the according to the crop you have to select the channel cavity and channel size and dia and uh, width so normally for suppose you are growing lettuce okay two inch three inch okay we can adjust but uh, don't grow bigger crops like uh, lettuce uh, like uh, strawberries and other crops in uh, a smaller uh, cavity channel. Yes, for commercial and uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, if uh, the space is not, not the problem, I always go for linear method because uh, the, I have seen very good results. And flow rates, uh, uh, the reservoir should be like uh, 0.5 to 2, 2 liters per minute where uh, uh, you just uh, adjust the uh, uh, motor and according to that, uh, you can give and uh, the reservoir size also you can you be you should be very careful because while selecting the reservoir uh, so don't go for too bigger uh, reservoir for a smaller number of plants it always depends uh, the size always depends on the number of the plants and uh, don't go uh, say i, I have uh, 100 plants don't go for uh, 5000 liters capacity of uh, reservoir just go with uh, 200 liters of uh, a syntax box which is uh, a true plastic uh, which is a virgin plastic which won't react with the chemicals always uh, because there are uh, standards of uh, good standards of hydroponics uh, in india also in india because i am talking to you frankly that in india we don't have any so far we don't have any government policy on hydroponic crops and hydroponics uh, material specifications i don't everybody using normal plastic also but there are indian international standards of hydroponics where we can use food grade material only but nowadays everybody using it with a uh, irrigation pipe and uh, that is the other other matter i don't want to uh, tell you but uh, really speaking better to go for food grade material only uh, including the tank also and uh, See, uh, I have for entrepreneurs who are coming into this field, I have given a good plan for uh, 
business. Uh, if you have a 5,000 plants uh, uh, business plan, see, you need 2,000 square meters. Um, so it's on the, on the uh, function hall, on the above the function hall or in between the uh, small spaces of the cities or near the uh, um, background, uh, these the uh, kitchen grow, kitchen area or somewhere near uh, very near to the city also you can plan near a plot where it is available in uh, the cities like Mumbai or Pune you can just plan in 2000 square meters uh, up to 5000 plants because uh, if you see the lettuce like crop which is uh, maturing in about four weeks area required for 5000 plants in a flatbed method a linear method at a three feet height will be around 312 square meters uh, because uh, each uh, the spacing between two channels will be 0.25 meters and uh, the spacing between the cavities will be 0.25 meters so that will be around uh, 312 meters uh, including pathway it is 500 square meters but in vertical farming we can adjust uh, 40 plants per square meter so then for 5000 plants it will be 128 square meters but including pathways it will be 200 square meters now you see the uh, cost uh, uh, greenhouse with automation uh, it's costing about uh, uh, 7 lakhs beds 9 lakhs total automation with the uh, beds and everything total 16 lakhs but uh, yield in one month it will be minimum should be or average should be like 0.2 kg the total will be 1000 kg if you sell as a not as a live plant, if you sell it as a, just by weight, it will be 200 rupees per kg. So the total income per month will be like, uh, this is uh, 2 lakh rupees. So operational cost and uh, power, electricity, seeds, labor, nutrition, 40,000 maximum I have taken. So it will be like, uh, operational cost. So it will be 1.6 lakhs per 45 days. So if you take uh, uh, in 30 days uh, a crop also, you can also take uh, a crop in 30 days. So it is possible, but uh, if you have to work in a systematic and uh, accurate way, in a disciplined way, you will be getting 12 crops where you can get 19.2 uh, lakhs per annum. But uh, if you even you take uh, 8 crops per annum, it will be uh, like 12.8 lakhs so, so it is uh, nearer to your investment uh, on the capex so nearly you will be uh, your ROI will be a little bit one or one and a half year either way so this is actually a general uh, uh, system uh, uh, systematic production will have this kind of results which we have uh, uh, worked for four years on this system but uh, yeah these almost all uh, these kind of results will be this this should be coupled with uh, good marketing background so that is one and the deep water also it is very easy because uh, for starters uh, for new entrepreneurs i always uh, because uh, this uh, deep water culture uh, for the entre new entrepreneurs uh, this works very well and uh, it is easy to grow and uh, easy to construct you can just uh, simply use the soil or a, or a tub or a uh, the container up to eight feet, eight inches, you can use the uh, depth uh, where you can fill uh, the quality water with the EC is uh, less than 0.5 and pH is uh, around six to six point eight to seven. So uh, those two conditions, you can fill the tubs or uh, the containers. You just make the uh, sump or some uh, like pond, like a pool, like kind of thing. And uh, you can keep uh, some thermocol wraps or styrofoam wraps and you just uh, grow the plants and uh, this is very easy system but uh, uh, many people are not using actually uh, but only they just go for nft and the company is also making money a lot of money because uh, nft it's it is showing very good beautiful handsome oh it's not required actually the novel system is in the concept of growing the plant not the in the concept of uh, establishing the um, high blue lights and uh, red lights and uh, very good videos in the channel in the YouTube's and uh, it is not that concept actually it is the concept of growing the plant in a uh, pesticide residue manner uh, no pesticide residue should be there and uh, 
we should feel like it is an organic product because in, before in us and uh, europe uh, it was classified as organic but in india now it is more chemical hydroponics is said to be more and highest chemical will be there in hydroponics why because everybody is spraying with a uh, with a lot of uh, poisonous chemicals i have observed uh, many growers without uh, knowing the concept of controlling the pest in the greenhouse so because you are the new entrepreneurs coming because this is a novel system is very good and technology is good the concept is good but without understanding people are making mistakes that is my uh, understanding from since last 10 years this is a very good system no doubt in that but many greenhouse uh, hydroponic systems are closed because of uh, pest management is difficult because of uh, nutrition management is difficult so that is why i always uh, uh, recommend the growers entrepreneurs always go with uh, um, the concept understand the concept and uh, your understanding should be in the climate management in the greenhouse and pest disease management in the greenhouse then if you are successful then the third thing is marketing the marketing will be very difficult even though but definitely once the product is with you when you are supplying consistently uh, people will come definitely you will bet success so the aeroponics also very easy system where you can just bombard the uh, tubers root system with the tiny uh, particles of water uh, that is uh, intermingled with the nutrients so it's a much um, greater scope is there for getting the aeration almost all the root is exposed to the air and it gets uh, fully aerated so the growth of the plant uh, depends upon the aeration not on the amount of the water it depends on the aeration and moisture so here moisture is continuous and the aeration is fully available so aeroponics has 100 percent growth when compared to all other hydroponic system this is the best one where you can grow ginger and turmeric in couple of months uh, it highly suits for research institutes where they multiply the bulbs and other tuber crops and potato true potato seeds and baby potatoes for seeds will be used by this system and with this system you can grow almost uh, all crops uh, um, uh, this is dwc aeroponics or uh, nftc all uh, leafy vegetables you can grow and the strawberry crop like a soft food crop you can grow strawberries but blueberries you can grow in a uh, inert material very successfully we have grown blueberries by using grow bag system dutch bucket system excellent results uh, now we are working on blueberries uh, our friend has a uh, a uh, tissue culture lab uh, of blueberry in uh, nelagris uh, we have 16 varieties from ukraine so we are trying them in uh, only in uh, inert material of uh, hydroponic system under grow bag see this is the uh, which i have developed uh, in 2016 in center of excellence gd metal first time we have uh, uh, commercially it is viable actually how it is you know because the you know soil uh, some of the soils are rocky, some of the soils are alkaline, some of the soils are highly acidic, highly sodic. So the farmer have approached us and we have uh, not even got for um, uh, the soil analysis. Without seeing the soil analysis report also, basically by seeing that it is so paddy grown soil and we have uh, developed uh, uh, this method of uh, uh, grow bag system. And this is uh, mostly uh, used in almost... Uh, uh see uh, in europe and uh, many many this in, in this version also we have a lot of uh, um the modifications so, but uh, the simple technique is simply drip and micro tube and uh, grow back grow back cost is 20 rupees and uh, it will take more than not more than five to six kg of uh, potting mixture of cocoa peat vermiculite and perlite and you just grow uh any crop like you can grow lettuce you can grow broccoli you can grow cabbage cauliflower and you can grow capsicums you can grow european cucumbers jucani and whatnot everything you blueberries strawberries everything you can grow and you can grow even the uh, fruits bigger fruits tropical fruits also so this is an excellent system it is working very commercial for the farmer only thing is you have to change the uh, the plastic bag once in three years or four years but cocoa peat you can use uh, for five to six years and when you are using dutch bucket system the only thing is 
the the dutch bucket is actually Um, actually, we have a small technical issue, so we'll join back very shortly. I request all the participants to please wait.
हेलो सर हेलो यस हेलो या या Is it right slide? The previous sir? slide. Sir, <laughs> uh, could you go to the previous one? Which one? The previous one, please. Previous. The previous one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Could you make it uh, bigger, wider, and large? No, it's not. Yeah, before one. Yeah, before grow back one. Grow back one. The before also before before the previous one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the economics of grow back system. See the. Uh, am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Now you see the. the economics in grow back system uh, i have calculated per a uh, quarter of the acre 0.25 acres with green capsicum or you can also say it you can also grow red capsicum which is giving you more price but uh, with the green capsicum also it is viable the uh, sir could you go to the previous slide yeah see the capex i have given for greenhouse 1000 square meters because you have you will get the subsidy from national horticulture board for any entrepreneur farm uh, uh, you will get the subsidy on uh, greenhouse uh, establishment uh, like 50% subsidy is there directly from national horticulture board is a back ended subsidy it is there in under commercial horticulture through production and post harvest management so depreciation it's costing around uh, 50000 rupees so very simple grow bags uh, filling 50000 weed mat uh, for 100 gsm you can uh, actually spread on the ground so that uh, you can minimize the weed growth so that uh, pest and disease very minimized and the poly bags i told you uv stabilized poly bags of uh, 500 microns are available in the market now indian company sunkul like gujarat uh, they are very familiar with this uh, a uh, grow bag production and uh, you can get from them and uh, each one will be costing around 20 rupees only so that uh, will be around uh, you can accommodate the uh, 2500 grow bags uh, for a quarter acre at a spacing of 2 by 2 feet and cocoa peat uh, will be around uh, uh, say i have taken 10 kg uh, the uh, wet weight i have taken so dry weight will be 5 kg so it will be around uh, 1.25 lakhs so the capex will be even with automation it will be 9.25 lakhs the automation in the sense the greenhouse automation and the drip automation here the drip automation will be very simple uh, there will be a tensiometer moisture um, road, uh, reading instrument, instrument will be there and other things will be like uh, uh, the ph and ec sensor will be there so including that also it will be costing say 9.25 to 10 lakhs and uh, Uh, operational cost uh, regarding uh, the management practices like releasing the plant nutrients because uh, i have taken organic uh, like neastra uh, bhamasra or simply you can you can go with the <coughs> leaf extract of neem and uh, custard apple and pongamia and uh, tobacco and green chillies and uh, garlic which is acting very very uh, powerful uh, kashaya for uh, this the thrips and mites because in a in greenhouse the problem might uh, be white flies mostly sucking pest we don't see the bigger uh, the pest uh, like uh, larvae or some uh, spodoptera or some other things but only we see the thrips and mites sucking pest normally so for them you can just go with uh, kashayas uh, like uh, this uh, is a leaf extract uh, 
uh, which is acting uh, uh, very very powerful on the, um, the sucking pest and even some eggs of uh, bigger caterpillars will be died so it will be controlled uh, effectively so you just go with the organic uh, extractions only where you can spend only 20000 rupees or 10000 rupees because nowadays you know the pesticide quantum of spraying it will be more and like they are spraying uh, say 1 lakh rupees of pesticides uh, and uh, see, uh, that i don't actually uh, suggest for the new entrepreneurs because you have to definitely establish a system of uh, um, preparing your own uh, uh, organic kashayas because these these are very powerful we have tried for many crops in open in greenhouse and also in hydroponics because don't go for the uh, the sophisticated uh, powerful fungicides and uh, insecticides which are very expensive and uh, and uh, they leave a lot of residues on the leaves that is why i don't recommend them and uh, definitely uh, go through the organic pesticide that's why i just put 10000 rupees you can't believe that you because only how to extract it. whenever you are doing this uh, kind of you know entrepreneurs system you, you have to establish your own uh, uh, preparation unit for this organic uh, extracts seeds uh, because the capsicum seeds will be costing around uh, uh, say <clears throat> i have given the uh, seeds amount will be like uh, 15000 so because here 2500 seeds are there so like uh, each one even it is costing like uh, 6 rupees it will be like 15000 so that's why because the capsicum seed uh, the green one costing like 4 rupees red is like 8 rupees and yellow is like 10 rupees so that all depends upon the color of this cross um, seed uh, which you are selecting for the capsicum the salary <clears throat> actually salary is the biggest uh, amount of opex i have given uh, this is the one uh, uh, say monthly uh, 15000 i have cal uh, calculated for 6 months because the cycle is 6 months and electricity bills uh, like uh, i have calculated 20% so total operation cost will be around 1.84 lakhs uh, could you please just go to the next slide please next slide please so could you go for the next slide yeah so these are the the again uh, the improved system of grow bag system uh, is a little, little bit expensive initially but uh, the durability of the grow bag is a uh, um, little bit more um, the, the touch bucket will be around 200 to 250 rupees that is the only difference uh, and uh, durability is again 10 10 years more than the grow bag system and you can here recycle the nutrients uh, in the touch bucket system so next please This is the one we have done on the sixth floor in a uh, 2,600 square feet area. We have established uh, nearly uh, 14 to 1,500 uh, number of plants of uh, different uh, uh, big vegetables like capsicum, tomatoes. Uh, for the uh, world age home, we have done uh, on the building of sixth floor. So uh, this is simple, and uh, this uh, these are kind of you not know, uh, systems are highly useful for. Uh, on the building because it's a uh, lightweight and easy to carry on and easy to adapt and even you can it is very flexible to shifting also so these kind of systems uh, definitely you can propose you can do it as a business uh, in the uh, uh, in the, on the building floors so yeah next please yes uh, the while greenhouse uh, construction be uh, careful that the uh, structure should be more viable uh, they should be designed according to the uh, slope topography and weather conditions so we have natural and uh, uh, controlled greenhouses but uh, definitely it needs uh, a lot of parameters to be parameters to be taken into account while designing the greenhouse. 
सो नेक्स्ट प्लीज या नाउ इट इज वी हैव द माइक्रो कंट्रोलर्स एंड सेंसर बेस्ड सिस्टम्स फॉर ऑलमोस्ट लोकल ग्रीन हाउसेस एंड कंप्यूटर बेस्ड वेदर कंडीशंस आर अवेलेबल एंड वी हैव uh the automation for uh, one side for the weather parameters and one side for the uh, nutrition management uh, or plant growth media conditions we have uh, a lot of equipment available in the market kindly go through that uh, please next please yeah we have given a nutrient package for the Uh, greenhouse and uh, hydroponic crops both uh, you can just go through this these are all available in any fertilizer shops they are soluble in the form they are still, our farmers are using since last of decades so just go through them there very uh, uh, fine materials available in the market uh, we have nfcl hifa and uh, foramandel so uh, many companies are available just uh, go through that and uh, apply to the crops according to the stage of the plant and uh, age of the plant and also uh, according to the climatic conditions next please the because i have mentioned here the irrigation and fertigation of the plant should be based on the stage of the plant seedling stage sprouting stage vegetative and budding flowering fruiting see that as the age grows the plant feeds more and more based on that you just increase the ec and also the uh, salt content that is uh, ec means salt content the ph always be stabilized from 5.2 to 6.8 but the ec levels you always be careful in the from the sprouting stage to the ripening stage be uh, next slide please i have given one slide where you can just see the uh, ec ratios ec levels next please yeah this is a slide which is useful for the entrepreneurs uh, so you can apply for all leaf vegetables in d between 1 to 1.5 and for tomato crops like uh, cherry tomatoes tomatoes you can go up to 3.8 from 1 1.52 to 3.8 and for salad crops you can grow up to 2.2 maximum ec levels i am giving you the maximum ec levels and capsicum kind of thing chillies and snacky peppers you can go up to 2.5 so these are so these are the levels of the ec uh, you should be keep in mind while doing the hydroponics because don't go initially very high concentrated salts into the plant they simply die so next please the next please Uh, yeah, these are the important pests. You can see the leaf miner thrips. The important thing is identification, mowing. Very important thing is a uh, pest identification monitoring and uh, adapting the cultural methods and mechanical and physical methods. Next piece. So I have mentioned few challenges. Uh, Uh, which are being encountered by our growers the pest similar to conventional farming we have observed lack of knowledge and crop cycles water bound diseases practical problems climate control in issue problems of sucking pest and lack of knowledge on the sucking pest control ipm inm trained persons are very important for the new entrepreneurs you have to train yourself all your people should be trained proper designs also very important business models marketing channels very important with this you will be a more successful person next please the 
the design improper designs you see here i have uh, displayed one uh, these channels where uh, the people are growing just two inch with the uh, uh, big root system and this uh, strawberry because uh, it is uh, a faulty design where the farmer or entrepreneur is uh, gaining losses only just don't go do the, don't do that be uh, the one who can just uh, know the concept and do the proper design select the property so with this i would like to finish thank you ag market and basment good evening once again everyone who have been participating any questions please go for the question um so we Hello? have a few questions but i think as we are a bit short on time so we'll answer all the questions through email i suppose yeah sure sure sir thank um, you right sir so with that said i thank, thank you sir for joining us today and giving us this informative session and we thank you a lot for your valuable guidance on this novel farming system of hydroponics thank you so much sir thank you sir right um thank you again sir for joining us today thank you dr ramakrishna sir um before moving ahead i would like to mention here that tomorrow saturday is the holiday and we will resume our 15th day of the atal program on sunday that is 5th of march we have a few more sessions left on export and international business followed by a valedictory session by director niyam and joint md cidco who is an ias officer so moving on to our next guest of honor from savana seeds private limited which is our sponsor for the beautiful knowledge sharing event on advances in agritech i would welcome mr ajay rana founder and ceo of savana seeds operations in south asia and southeast asian markets it is a privilege to introduce sir sir is an mba graduate Ajay Rana sir has built his expertise in multiple areas including sales marketing business development product management pricing specialist startup and general management roles in his work experience with leading crop protection seed biotech and life science firms in india as well as overseas so possesses a rich experience in recruiting talent identifying business growth opportunities developing strategic plans and executing the plans Sir is a passionate individual who is keen on learning and introducing new technology so that he could address every challenge posed before farming. He is the founder of Savana Seeds and takes care of operations in South Asia and Southeast Asian markets. He has led Savana's business from a stage when it was just a startup and has put his hundred percent contribution to building the company into one of the largest rice seed companies in Southeast Asia region. Ajay Sir has been actively engaged with the American Seed Trade Association (ASTA), National Seed Association of India (NSAI), and Federation of Seed Industry of India (FSII) to develop IP. technology extension and policy related strategies and stakeholder outreach programs he has a vast experience of key policy makers academia and business leaders so i would now request ajay sir to please start with the session thank you for a kind introduction uh, i was uh, on the call for a while and uh, i could hear the previous presenter very interesting uh, presentation 